Welcome to episode 2 of The Return of the King. What will happen after the rapture of the church? The second great phase in God's intervention program is a seven-year period we describe as the tribulation. As the name suggests, it will be a time of unprecedented suffering and trouble, the like of which the world has never seen before. After the church has been removed, after the rapture, there will be a rapid descent into chaos, moral chaos, political chaos, religious chaos, environmental chaos. God will be beginning in a systematic, measured way to unleash his judgments upon the earth. In the book of Revelation, we read of scrolls being unrolled, trumpet blasts, we read of bowls of wrath and judgment being poured out on the earth. And the earth will be convulsed with suffering and disaster of a type and on a scale previously unknown. And at the very centre of this storm will be the nation of Israel. Israel will be exposed and vulnerable, desperate for security and peace. Against this background, there will arise a world leader who will seem to have all the answers. He will enter into peace and security agreement with the nation of Israel. And when the treaty is signed, God's prophetic clock starts to tick. Many will be so dazzled with this leader that they will think that perhaps he is the long-promised Messiah, the one who's going to save the nation of Israel. He will encourage and fund the rebuilding of the temple on the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. He will reinstate sacrifices in the temple. It will seem as though Israel's deliverer, Israel's protector has arrived and perhaps their golden age is about to dawn. The opposite will in fact be true. This leader will turn out to be no less than the Antichrist, the man of sin, the beast, as described in the book of Revelation. He will head up a coalition of ten nations, possibly an evolution of the present EU or something similar. He will promote and ally himself with a worldwide religious movement known as Babylon the Great. He will seem to promise security, prosperity and peace, but in actual fact, the world will be ravaged with war and conflict, drought, disease, pandemics, natural disasters and famines. After three and a half years, the Antichrist will be seen in his true colours. He will break his agreement with Israel. He will stop the sacrifices in the temple. He will erect an image in the temple in Jerusalem and compel all to worship the image and to worship the dragon, Satan himself, who gives him his power. He will perform signs and wonders that will deceive many, many people. He will turn against his religious allies and destroy them. He will insist that no one buys or sells without his mark, the mark of the beast, imprinted on their foreheads or on their hands by possibly laser technology. From this point onwards, the judgments upon the earth will increase in their severity and in their frequency. And this is referred to as the Great Tribulation. And during the Great Tribulation period, the beast will turn with fury against the nation of Israel. In fact, the Bible describes this period as the time of Jacob's trouble. And so, although the whole world is suffering, in a special sense, this is going to be a time of intense suffering when Israel is targeted. And at this point, the nation of Israel will consist of three types. First of all, there will be those who have received the Lord Jesus as their Savior and as the Messiah. Secondly, there will be those who have been deceived into believing in the Antichrist and to thinking that this is their Messiah. And thirdly, there will be the conservative religious Jew who will understand and will realize with horror that this man is an imposter. He is not the true Messiah. And they will be waiting and longing for the true Messiah to arrive, although they don't know who he is. During this dreadful time, there will be other coalitions of nations either allied to or opposed to the beast and his kingdom. But they all will be united in their hatred of Israel. Ultimately, the period will end with the armies of the earth massing together in the Middle East, preparing for a final confrontation, the Battle of Armageddon. This is the climax of the tribulation period. The tiny state of Israel, it will seem, is going to be extinguished once and for all. And then just at the very last minute, when it seems that the light of Israel is going to be snuffed out, the Lord Jesus will be revealed, coming in glory with the armies of heaven. 
and this is the end of the tribulation period. And this is the reason for all the judgments that have been poured out on the earth. They're setting the stage for the return of the King. And the Lord Jesus, who left Jerusalem carrying his cross, is going to come to the very Mount of Olives. And he is going to enter Jerusalem as the conquering King and all his enemies will be destroyed before him. That's the subject of our next study, the Revelation. Well, the tribulation events described in the Bible are not happening yet. But what we see around us today is evidence of how close we are to these events. And as a result, we need to get right with God. And we need to do it now. The Lord Jesus is coming again. God is about to intervene in human affairs. Thank you for watching. And if you have any questions about what you've heard, please email me.